The Pawn Stars have had some of the most exquisite teams come in and out of the shop, but then it becomes a whole new level of A-listers who step off their glamorous stage and into this bargaining arena to sell items. Will these celebrities strike a golden deal or walk away with pockets as empty as their promises? Join us for some jaw-dropping dramatic moments where celebrities attempt to sell items on Pawn Stars. Dana White Pawns, a stunning 1600 Japanese samurai sword. Not every day a celebrity decides to part ways with a piece with sentimental value and a unique history. The Pawn Stars team, led by Rick, was quick to spot the priceless samurai sword. But did they strike a deal? Or is the item too precious to be sold? So Rick's got a samurai sword that knows more battles than we ever care to count. Having sent it off to Japan for enhancement, it just arrived and looked sharper than it used to. But Rick's got rules, and rule number one, this beauty isn't up for sale. He thought everyone heard that well. Well, only for some. This is the captain's idea, but the crew has other ways and plans. In truth, what can't be sold is now redeemable. Rick's colleagues attempt to sell the sword to a customer. Hold on, though. Rick isn't one to let things slide. When he discovers this, he gets furious and confronts his colleagues. The sword wasn't just some novelty. It was a piece of the past, meant to be cherished, not invested. They bargain, they debate, and they go round and round. The price? A cool $9,000. It's an old routine, yet somehow, you still get surprised when things are not going the usual way. Bingo! Rick folds. With its hint of ancient heroes, the sword now has a new owner. That was the end of the story of the samurai blade that divided the laws. Wonder what surprises the next episode holds. A celebrity coming for another piece of history. Stay tuned. The ultimate bargain for Titus O'Neil's legacy. Surprisingly, a couple enters the shop with a pair of wrestling shorts for sale. But this is not short. It's the one Titus O'Neil wore during the high-stakes Money in the Bank event. Rick and Chum are intrigued, but are still determining the value. The couple's initial ask of $1,800 kicks off a negotiation, with Rick countering at $1,400. The bargaining is fierce, but they eventually lock in a deal at $1,000. However, the story takes an unexpected twist when Chum and the other colleague invite O'Neill to a dinner. Rick is surprised by the August visitor. Rick and his team dined with Titus O'Neill himself, intending to return the shorts. O'Neill reveals he had gifted them a backstage hand for a solo photo shoot, a detail that adds a layer of authenticity and intrigue to the memorabilia. The anticipation builds as we wonder who's walking through the door next. Will there be a deal or not? Steve Farrell pawns a military driver's knife. A new customer appears. Guess who it is this time? It's Steve Farrell, known to everyone as a public figure. He walks in with a sense of purpose. His vision is set on a trophy, a military driver's knife used during World War II, which becomes a whisper of heroic deeds and courage. With its sharp edge and history of struggle between the old and new, the knife is not just a lump of metal and a handle combined. It's a chunk of history, a device that perhaps once was an integral part of shaping the way things are now. Conscious of its importance, Steve is already full of a desire to win it over for his collection, but he has to play numbers with Rick, an expert in the field of weighing. With an opening bid of $4,000, Steve demonstrates good intention over another piece of wartime memorabilia. However, the business-minded Rick comes up with a new offer of $5,000, giving the negotiation a taste of the times that history buffs will stay in. They go back and forth, swirling in the air that is now thick with expectation, every counteroffer cutting through the top layer of the proposal. With the pace of the bargaining burning through, it becomes obvious that this is not an ordinary exchange. It is a conflict of determination, a trial that would reveal how much one is willing to pay to acquire a piece of history. The last amount to be settled on is $3,200, which reflects the knife's value alongside Steve's persistence in attaining a piece of history. With its new owner, the knife eventually finds its way to another home, and the shop bustles with the joy of the day's happenings. However, the process doesn't conclude with one episode. 
it unravels, exposing me to more valuables, treaties, and the amazing world of pawning. What historical artifact will challenge Rick's expertise next? Stay tuned. Katie Kirk's Pawns a Mark Twain's Collection The store doors remain open, and Katie Kirk walks in, her eyes scanning the shelves for that one piece waiting for her. Now, however, she is after a treasure of a different type, a rarity selected by the versatile Mark Twain himself. It is not the writings of any man, but the person who raised Huck Finn from the dust and filled us with all those witty quotations we adore. Rick's got it all right. It simply sits there, gleaming even in the shadow like it is worth a ton of money. And oh well, it must be more than $20,000 because that's what he's asking for. Though Katie, that's not the girl's number. She's psyching herself into thinking that it'll probably be $12,000. Thrilled by the electric atmosphere, they are playing a numbers game. It's a war game, actually a real clash of bargains. No one player is getting the upper hand, but it's clear that both are enjoying themselves. This is not an ordinary day when you barter over values that would give you pride. At last, after the haggling, they came to a consensus, and it was $12,000. In the end, Katie has a part of Twain with her, and ought to narrate the afternoon to Rick, as it will be a worthy story to tell. As this episode's screen dims, you can't help but wonder what's next. What other treasures are waiting in the wings? Who's going to walk through that door tomorrow? Let's find out. Plaque and Platinum Record gets pawned. Another celebrity moment to come that'll hit home. Rick is on a mission, the celebrity assistant's hands clutching a Plaque and Platinum Record and blown away by Rick's arrival. The proof of Melody's so emotional, they have moved millions. Rick is there for the taking, his eyes scanning the brilliant display of success. He kicks off the auction at $2,500, a figure that flows in the air like the first note of a sensational tune. But she is not singing the same tune. She wants $3,500. Her voice is hard and her stance is inflexible. The studio develops into a negotiation theater, and the push and pull creates a binary rhythm of presence and counteroffers. She's so excited, her energy infectious, her smile open. It seems to come as a shock to all, this outpour of joy amidst commerce, a reminder that behind every item hides a story, a feeling, a tune. In numbers they are dueling, and each rebuttal is coming closer to a conclusion, and dramatically, as if the last note of a well-written song is performed, there is $2,500. It makes harmonies of compromise and respect, an individual note in the orchestra of pawns. As the episode continues, the Platinum Award is being unpacked, leaving the audience with a sense of anticipation. What surprises will the next episode hold? Another celebrity? Another piece of history? Richard Petty Pawns, his 1984 tribute car. Rick's eyes light up on Richard Petty's sleek tribute car. A replica of Petty's 200th NASCAR victory in 1984, this beauty has history written all over it. Rick is well aware that what Richard Petty has seen in over 1,000 races and 200 wins is no car at all. The owner is asking $125,000 for this piece of racing royalty, but Rick got a taste of power for himself. He imagines it spinning, the engine roaring like thunder, a tribute to Petty's legacy at the track. But as Rick watches the car's skills, the legend himself, Petty, walks in to verify the car belonged to him. The box is larger than life, and its existence sends shockwaves through space. He takes one look at the car and nods at his signature. This is the real deal. Now that Rick is more eager to build his own, throw in an $84,000 offer. However, the master does not move. He has set it at $125 grand. They go back and forth, but it's a stalemate. No deal has been signed, and the tribute artist is waiting for his next fan. As we close this chapter, we wonder what will happen next. What other treasures will Rick find? What stories will they tell? You guys keep doing it. Stan Lee scores an epic deal. The store's routine swirls with excitement as a young man waves a treasure a 70s Spider-Man comic book decorated with the signature of the legendary Stan Lee. It's a collector's jackpot, 
a slice of superhero history. Chum is in the hot seat with a knockdown price of $10,000 upwards. But don't catch him in this network just yet. He shoots for $3,500, his sharp eyes to prove it. The owner can't move fast enough, countering with $8,000. But Chum's bargaining power is set to falter, offering $4,200. Locked into heroic work, they eventually land on $5,000. But Chum got one last performance, reality from the brand himself, Stan Lee. In a fitting comic book adaptation, Stan Lee appears, confirming the authenticity of the strip, the artist, John Romita, and the craft. The expert's seal of approval was waved at it. The deal is as epic as the strip itself, and as the episode wraps, we're left to wonder what adventure awaits in the next issue. Neil Preston hits hard on Hotel Discoveries. The pawn shop has seen its fair share of extraordinary events in the middle of the Las Vegas tornado. However, the episode of Pawn Stars we are going to watch today is unlike any other. The stage is all set when Rick Harrison, the shop's owner, gets a call that triggers a wonderful event. The caller is a man with a stash of photos from the now-closed Hard Rock Hotel, a site where rock stars used to reign. As the collection comes into view, it takes Rick by surprise. The pictures in front of him are not merely photographs, they're peepholes to the soul of rock and roll. Deborah Harry's penetrating look, Michael Jackson's youthful vibrancy, Led Zeppelin's commanding presence, and Freddie Mercury's electric performance were all photographed by Neil Preston, a shutterbug who documented the classical music era. The seller's pitch is as bold as the legends in the photos, not submitted yet. Limited editions, 50 pieces worth $150,000. It's a high-stakes gambling affair, and Rick knows how to play. He brings in the only person who can testify to the authenticity of these visual anthems, Neil Preston. Tension hangs in the air as Preston comes into the room, and his eyes sweep over each page. With every nod, he gives them a stamp of authenticity, even arranging twins from his collection. The air is stirring with history, and the visuals tell the tales of the times that moved a nation. Nevertheless, the problem of value remains the biggest one. An independent expert had appraised the collection at a whopping $200,000. The seller, who felt the ball was in his court, lowered the asking price to $130,000. Rick, the negotiator, countered with $95,000. The negotiation was a pretty rough one, with every move meticulously measured. Next on Pawn Stars, will Rick hit the jackpot or bust? Revived Gulf Oil sign, Pawns High. In an interesting episode of Pawn Stars, we experience how the forgotten piece of junk is the collector's pride. Rick, the owner of the pawn shop, accidentally encounters a Gulf Oil relic, a piece of timeless Americana that has been taken out of use and hidden away by a war surplus store. After spending only $200 on the reproduction of the sign, it was sent to professional restoration services. Even though this sign is faded and rusted, its piece is worth more than the battered metal it is made of. With his exquisite skills in restoration, he is called upon to take up the challenge of rewelding and rejuvenating the faded glory of the sign. The cost of restoration is a hefty $10,000. However, the odds are against me, but so are the rewards. Rick's words show his business skills when he consults on the sign's worth after restoration. The verdict is in. The sign could have a price tag as high as $25,000, a treasure hunt that can generate a substantial profit for Rick. Corey and Rick's excitement as they go to the workshop to watch how the scene will turn out is beyond words. What comes out is incredible. The faded Gulf oil sign reappears restored, and its colors are brighter, and its rusty past is a thing of memory. It shows us the power of restoration and how a treasure can stay even in the debris of the past. The Pawn Stars episode is about the deal, the genuine history of the American industry, and nostalgia's undying power. It begins with the belief that beauty and value are everywhere, even in bizarre situations. Wonder what awaits us in the next episode. Wonder who the next celebrity might be. Let's find out. A movie poster with a fake autograph gets pawned. 
In what would make Tarantino proud, a movie poster shows up at the shop. Signatures by who's who film stars like Willis, Travolta, and Jackson are written all over it. The financial amount to spend is not significant, but the consequences are important. To a certain extent, the experts do investigate that and more. Experts quoting of the piece as a likely great work gives rise to the scene of a blockbuster payday. But this excitement is crushed when it becomes clear that it is a reproduction. In my opinion, the second expert's evaluation increases the tension level more and makes the resolution of the deal depend on the genuineness of the signatures. As the trial progresses, the signatures become the reason for that forgery, not of fame. The expert's keen eye discerns the truth, reality check. None of the autographs are real. The trade is off, and there is nothing left but a fable for the world to remember, and a poster of no more value than a bunch of papers. Will the next item be a treasure trove, or another cautionary tale? Find out on Pawn Stars. Dangerous Gunsmoke Prop Gun Pawned Down In the pawn shop, the customer glories over the relic from the TV series Gunsmoke, which has a rarity label for $25, indicating that it was present in the 1957 and 1958 seasons. He, Rick, affirms it must be rare because it even echoes the 50s. In addition to the prop, it features the paperwork of Cambridge Gun Rentals, which was reportedly employed in the series at some point. Through a more thorough investigation, we may raise some issues, such as the presence of ammunition in a loaded prop gun. Rick clarifies the danger. A pristine collector's gem could easily turn into a potentially deadly weapon as the rifle operating pin is equipped. The customer's bid starts at $1,200, but Rick, as good as he is at haggling down prices, shouts $500. Amidst the thrill of the bidding, they eventually agree on $750, which is equal to the true value of their I Love Lucy television rarity. In the next scene, the past will meet the present, and the negotiation will be tough. Mr. T. Dahl faces tough negotiation. A client enters, carrying an item that falls under the pop culture category, a Mr. T. Dahl. The guy who was looking at the doll he was famously associated with who was mainly known for his tough guy persona and role in the A-Team, has a story as big as his on-screen image. From college dropout to the VIP bouncer and ending up as a film star rocking three, the feat of his life is as unique as his hawk. The seller's price tag? A hefty $3,000. Nevertheless, this turn of events is a shock when an appraiser who says the doll is only worth $275 gives his analysis. Unconcerned, the seller perseveres firmly. As offering $100, Corey looks insane, and the counter-seller responds with $140. In the end, they share a hand. This way, they agree. What's next? Tune in to find out. Will the next item be a hidden gem or another tough bargain? A Peter Henling's watch pawned for 20 bucks. A man walks into the shop through the door, he holds a pocket watch attributed to Peter Henling, a German locksmith known for inventing portable timepieces. This specific model is reputed to run for 40 hours on a rewind, which is proof of ancient watchmaker's cleverness. Rick's curiosity is piqued. Has it been disassembled? The answer is no. His examination shows marked silver, an alloy of 92.5% silver, which is attested to by the hallmark of an anchor thus proving its origin in the UK and with a date code of 1893. Although Rick is over 30 years old and carefully handmade, he realizes that such things are not worth much on the market now. The negotiation begins. Rick quotes $100, but the customer considers silver could fetch that much. Rick, however, insists on $20 for silver itself. The customer sticks to their demands, and in the end, there is a parting of ways, and no agreement is reached. What will the next episode bring? A rare find or another tough negotiation? Join us on Celebrity Pawn Stars to witness the unfolding drama of history and value. Simi Mosley's gospel guitar hits hard on paddling. A customer enters carrying a guitar that rings a bell in the history of music, the prototype of Simi Mosley's blue gospel guitar. 
This guitar is highly regarded for its stylish look and Moserate neck, which indicate innovation and devotion. The story behind it is as unmistakably unique as its smell. A meeting with a Spanish luthier at a European meeting inspired me to design this guitar to increase the performance level of gospel singers who would connect with the divine. The price is too high for Rick to accept the offer, however, he is intrigued. The self-known professional customer has kept this piece since 1969, worth $100,000. However, a gloomy tune is struck if a professional is involved. The valuation is $67,000 to $68,000, with a market value of $25,000. The expert may sing a different tune, but the customer may be adamant. The guitar is a sentimental and historical item that is priceless, causing a standstill. No deal was struck, but the story of the blue gospel guitar never left. What will the next episode unveil? A rare find or a tough negotiation? Stay tuned for more tales of extraordinary celebrity items and the stories they carry. Orville Wright's historic letter pawned at 3,300. The pawn shop, a cross-section between past and present, catches an extraordinary item of history. A souvenir from Orville Wright, one of the revered aviation pioneers. The artifact under question is not any item. It is a physical representation of 12 seconds that changed the world. The first sustained powered flight on December 17, 1903. The memorabilia comprises several letters, one of which is signed by Wright, another license, a pilot's license also bearing Wright's signature, and one more license for spherical balloons. These things represent not only the collectibles and memoirs, but also the fragments of a dream that soared from a humble garage to the skies above and forever changed how humanity can live and adapt. Knowing the historical value, the seller appraises the collection at $4,000. Rick, the store owner, is caught between being curious and cautious. Wright's genuineness is of the utmost significance, as it is this autograph that breathes life into these documents, turning them from mere documents to relics of innovation. An expert is called in, and the painting is found to be genuine after careful examination. The signature does indeed belong to Wright. The professional finally valued the item at a staggering $15,000. This figure reflects the magnitude of the Wright brothers' feats. Nevertheless, the dance of bargaining starts. Rick, who realizes the importance of business, offers $3,000. The buyer who believes in the value of an item stands up to the seller. For example, back and forth proves the balance between historical value and market price. Finally, an agreement is reached at $3,300, which respects the outstanding memorabilia and sale nuances. This is not only a trade of goods, but also an exchange that honors the legacy of the two brothers who, with their vision, drove people into the new age. As the deal concludes, the memorabilia finds a new custodian, and the story of the Wright brothers continues to inspire. It's a reminder that some items carry more than just monetary value. They embody the spirit of human achievement and the relentless pursuit of progress. The episode closes, but the journey of discovery does not. Each item that enters the shop is a thread in the fabric of history, waiting to be unraveled. As we anticipate the next episode, we are reminded that the value of the past is not just in its appraisal, but in its ability to connect us to the great tapestry of human experience. The Book of Mormon gets pawned. The pawn world is never predictable, and this episode proves this fact. A man enters the shop with a treasure that's not just spiritual, but also historical. The Book of Mormon. Not just any copy, but the fifth edition, the last one printed during the lifetime of Joseph Smith, the founder of the Latter-day Saint movement. The atmosphere in the shop intensifies with anticipation, as this book symbolizes religious history and American heritage. The seller, aware of the importance of the American legacy, starts the bidding war at $25,000. Rick, the seasoned shop owner, is impressed. He knows this isn't merely a transaction, it's a transfer of a piece of the past that has helped shape countless lives. An expert's opinion is required to authenticate and value such a piece. 
An expert in rare books is called upon, and with her comes a wealth of knowledge. She delves into the book's importance, not just as a cornerstone of theology, but as a pivotal piece in the puzzle of American history. Her eyes, trained to spot the undetectable, confirm it's indeed the sought-after fifth edition. Her appraisal? A whopping $40,000. A figure that speaks volumes about its scarcity and significance. Rick turns to the seller to ask for his price. The seller stands firm at $25,000, but Rick, obviously born to negotiate, counters with $24,000. It's a delicate balance, weighing the worth of wisdom against the scales of commerce. In the end, a deal is struck at $24,000. Hands are shaken, and the Book of Mormon finds a new custodian. It's a testament to the timelessness of sacred texts and their enduring monetary and historical value. As the episode ends, the store's doors remain open, a gateway to the past and a gateway to the future. Everything that crosses the threshold is a story, a piece of history waiting to be told. And as we leave the Book of Mormon behind, we eagerly turn the page for the next chapter in the Celebrity Pawn Stars story. What will the next episode reveal? A rare piece of art or a common curiosity? Time will tell. But one thing is certain, the journey through history's treasures continues. And each episode promises a discovery, a chance to own a piece of one's past. What do you think about these celebrity encounters on Pawn Stars? Let's know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.